The new big custom aquarium is here. It is set up behind me. It arrived about a week ago. It was delivered right to my house. My brother showed up to help me unbox and get it down to my basement. All right guys, the new custom aquarium is here. We're already unboxing it. I can't wait to show you what we have today. It is absolutely freezing out today. But I have Quinn and Alec here with me. We're gonna get right into it, so let's dive right in. Okay, so we have the tank stand on top and the tank below. The stand itself is very tall. It's actually 36 inches tall. And I'll explain why I did that later. But it's absolutely freezing. It's like the coldest day for March 18th that we've ever had. It's like 10 degrees out. <laughs> we planned this. <laughs> We're there. So we got the plywood off. Now we just have to get all the rest of the boards off the tank and the stand. You can start to see the tank down here. Some holes drilled in the back there for the plumbing that we'll walk through. But overall, the tank looks great. Can't wait to get it down into my basement. We got everything on box on the top. Now we are going to move the tank stand downstairs, which is always one of the hardest parts of these. The tank stands are always heavier and harder to get down than we always expect. Here we go. your way a little bit. What would you say you do here? So what you don't see a lot in our videos is all the hard work and labor that I put in behind the scenes. I really don't know where we would be without the muscle that I provide. What, you want to do something here? Oh, hey, Troy. We're going to go up and over that. Let's go back up a little bit. Is it too early for a pivot joke? Pivot! Shut up! Shut up! Difficult twist. With all the help that I gave them, we finally got the stand upright and in the basement. We're good. Now it's time to get the stand in its final resting place. Okay, so we got these handy suction cups that are always great to have when you're removing a big glass tank like this, and uh, it's kind of a lifesaver. I can't feel my fingers, Lloyd. Maybe you should wear these extra gloves. My hands are starting to get sweaty. I'll oh, change this up. Look at your back. I'm busy here. Oh, Chester, back up, bud. Back up, back up, back up, dude. Chess is like, you don't need help, I got you. Back up. Chess, come on. <laughs> That's pretty easy. Yeah, we're gonna slide. Twist. Alec, you gotta make sure you hold on. Yeah, I got it. Can. I got a good grip. Alright, we're just sliding. Yep. Oh. I just lost a f***ing suction cup. Okay, we're good. Hold on. If I lose the other one, that was all on you. I would take it from the bottom, maybe? Can you try to resuck some? Yeah. Okay, hold it all, okay? Oh I'm gonna take the other hand off. Ready? It. One, two, three. We're good. Okay, got it. The uh, fogginess added an extra element to this that we haven't encountered before. The suction cups were slipping a little bit, but we made it. It's like moving a 200 pound ice cube down the stairs. That's thawing. It's like the first one we moved down here was 180 gallons, then 150, now it's like 135, and somehow it seems harder every time. I think the 180 gallon was the problem because it was acrylic, so it was like the easiest thing ever, so we were like, we can move anything down here. One, two, three. Please don't fall, please don't fall. We're good. That was easy. <laughs> It's more awkward than anything. 
So one of the most exciting things about this tank is this AI blade freshwater light that we are gonna be trying out. So I'm gonna unbox this and we're gonna put it on the tank. Let's check it out. But here we go. Look at that. <laughs> yeah, so this is awesome. It looks very sleek, thin. It's gonna be a really cool light. You can see the different clusters of LEDs. I think on the 66 inch light that I have here, there are seven different clusters and they're going to light up this tank and make it look awesome. So next up, we're gonna go ahead and add the substrate, which is a mix of Carib Sea Aragonite sand, as well as African Cichlid mix, which has some crushed up shells. I think these two blended together will look really nice and it buffers your pH, which is really good for African Cichlids. Not totally necessary since my water is already pretty high in pH. We're basically doing as much as we can together before my brothers leave, and then I work on plumbing the sump. But I really like how these two Carib Sea substrates mix together. I think it's a really unique look, something I don't have in my other tanks. Okay, so I'm putting on the final coat of paint here. You might be wondering why I didn't just select the black background from Custom Aquariums, and to be honest, I just completely forgot to check that box. I'm not a smart man. So Alec and Quinn just left because I have to wait for all this to dry anyway. It's gonna be a multiple day process, but with the magic of editing, you're gonna see it all in this video. So next step, we're gonna flash forward to the plumbing. So I had two quick stops to make. The first was at Lowe's where I picked up some PVC primer and glue, as well as the T-split that's gonna be needed for the return lines. Next, I stopped at my local fish store to pick up some more rocks. Lastly, I got some Fritz Turbo Start, which is really gonna jumpstart the cycle of this tank. Okay guys, so I already started on the plumbing. Let's walk through what I've done so far. So this is the seamless sump from Custom Aquariums that I absolutely love. I have one on my 150 right now. Pretty simple to set up. You just put it under the tank and these different modular units connect together very nicely. On the right is a reservoir unit, which really helps with evaporation and Rambo seems to love it. So next we have the H2O overflow, which will drain down into the seamless sump. So we'll get this on the back and then we'll measure the return and the drain lines. And then on the inside of the tank, you have two H2O overflows. You can either have them sticking out towards the front of the tank or you can twist them to the side like I have here. I like them to be a little more discreet this way and just be to the back right and left of the tank. And then lastly, we have the two returns here, which comes with a siphon stopper from Custom Aquariums, which helps prevent any type of overflowing of your sump, which is really helpful. So I'm gonna get these on the two return lines now. So for my return pump, I have the CJ Synchra SDC. I've actually used this pump on my 150 here for a little over a year. I really love how quiet it is. The five year warranty is very nice and being able to control it all within one app with all of my wave makers and pumps all in one spot is pretty awesome. But after I get this out of the box, I need to put it into the sump and then measure the length that the return hose needs to go up to the T-split. So on the first day of plumbing, I got the pump in place. I measured the return line to come out of the sump to the T-split. During this time, I also primed and glued the drain lines to the stealth box as well as into the seamless sump. As this was drying, I was preparing the return lines to eventually connect to the T-split. And then when it comes to the return lines, these tubes are pretty rigid, so using a little bit of heat helps you flex it into the spot that you need. This elbow is the top of the return line that goes back to the tank, and it definitely would not fit into this without a little bit of heat, so the heat gun allows this to go in smoothly. And there you go. After I had the return lines glued into place, the next day it was time to move the tank into its final spot. I needed to move it a couple feet to the left and back. So I needed a little bit of help to do that, so we got a quick cameo from Cichlid Bro and Law Rob. Whoa, whoa. <laughs>
So the aquascape is basically done. The sump is actually full of water. So now we're gonna fill this tank. But just a quick note on the aquascape and why I set it up this way. Peacocks and haps, the fish that will be going in this tank are open water swimmers. And if you add too much decor, rock work, driftwood, etc., it actually can create aggression as they fight over territories in the tank and it takes away from their natural swimming behavior. And also there are no live plants in this tank because peacocks and haps are usually just brutal on plants, either destroying or eating them over time. Sometimes you can get away with certain species of plants, but I'm just not gonna waste my time with that. I will have a clear water algae scrubber on this tank to help reduce nitrates. So we'll go over that in just a bit. But I'm really just excited to get this tank filled up and then move the fish over see the final product coming very soon, so let's get to it. So if you're wondering how we put fish into this new tank so quickly, we cycle the tank fast by pulling over biological media from my other tanks. I took a full tray of biomedia from my 150 and put it into the sump of the new tank. I also took filter floss and some different sponges out of the 75 gallon tanks filters. There will also be a little bit of beneficial bacteria that's on the rocks coming over from the old tank. So with the seeded media, the rocks from the old tank, Fritz Turbo Start, and feeding the tank lightly in the first week. There should be no issues with ammonia or nitrite. The tank is basically cycled right away. We've done this process on all of our upgrades and bigger tanks and it's worked perfectly. So obviously I am very excited to have this tank in place and finally set up with all the fish that I had planned to go in this tank for so long. It might take another day or two for the tank to look totally clear, but it is looking great already. The colors on these peacocks and haps are already really popping in this tank, and I think they're really enjoying the extra swimming space in the tank. This six foot aquarium fit perfectly in this nook of my basement, and I feel like it really tied the room together. That rug really tied the room together, did it not? I absolutely love the custom aquarium. I feel like it it even looks better in person just the quality of the tank itself just really can't be beat I love the seamless sump it's totally quiet behind me with the CJ pumps running I have the CJ pumps and wave makers all in the same app as my other custom aquarium so it's very convenient and then the lighting on this tank is another aqua illumination light so that's also on the same app as my 150 so these two custom aquariums are really sharing a lot of the same technology. This AI blade light is one of the cooler parts of this tank. We actually tried to fit the mounts on the back of the tank to have this lifted about six inches above the tank, but because the custom aquarium has a pretty thick aluminum frame, the mounts themselves just couldn't really squeeze on there, so I'm still trying to figure that out. That's one thing that will be coming in the next video on this tank very soon. But even with this light sitting flush on the lid and not mounted, it still looks great and I'm very excited to have it. Another thing that will be coming in the next video on this tank very soon 
will be the installation of the clear water algae scrubber. I know I talked about this a lot in recent videos and I'm very excited to have it reduce nitrates in this tank over time. Especially as these fish grow and produce more waste, that algae scrubber is really gonna be key at reducing my nitrates and my water changes. That clear water scrubber will actually sit on top of my sump and that's one of the reasons I went with a 36 inch stand for this tank. That allows for enough clearance for the sump plus the height of the algae scrubber which will be sitting on top of the sump. And obviously there's a great benefit of having a taller stand with your tank just up a little bit higher and being able to look directly into the tank versus hunching down so much. And I'm also very excited to have this aquarium finally set up and in place because I moved the electric fluocaras from the 20 gallon tank into the 75 gallon tank temporarily. This will be a nice upgrade and grow out tank for these electric fluocara. It's actually kind of funny seeing the electric blue car army in the 75 gallon tank. We got to electric Avenue. And by moving them into the 75 gallon tank, that opens up some quarantine space for future fish that I'll be buying. So there are a lot of exciting updates, new fish, new equipment that are all going to be coming and falling into place now that this big aquarium is set up. If you have any questions on the setup, make sure to leave that down in the comments below. I'll leave affiliate links to any and all products that we showed and used in this aquarium build. I'm very excited to have this custom aquarium set up. I'm going to be showing many updates on it very soon, as well as some of the other projects happening in my basement. And that's not even counting Alec and Quinn's projects that are ongoing. And on that note, thank you to the other Cichlid Bros for helping me out in this aquarium build. Make sure to hit that subscribe button, and thanks so much for watching.